Good afternoon, you wee bastards, and welcome back to War Thunder with Koala. And today, we're talking about one of the big new changes coming to the game in update 1.91, which, oddly enough, at the time I'm recording this, we still do not have a name for, although there may be another devlog out this evening, so keep your eyes peeled. One of the most major aspects of modern tank combat is thermal sights and imaging systems, and you would not believe when I was scripting this video how many times I wrote imagine systems there. Sheesh. Thermal or infrared sights and night vision image intensifiers are of a huge importance on the modern battlefield. Even in daylight, thermal sights serve a huge purpose. Up until now though, this has been missing from War Thunder, but in update 1.91, vehicles that had access to this type of equipment in real life, including helicopters, will be receiving these imaging systems in-game. Fixed-wing aircraft will also receive night vision in the future, which makes it sound as though they won't receive it upon the release of 1.91, though to be honest I have no idea which aircraft we currently have did use such equipment. The A26 Invader did 100% use night vision, in fact that was one of its signature features, and the P61 and A1 Sky Raider as well I believe. I would also suggest that the F-100D Super Sabre had night vision equipment, don't quote me on that, and the same goes for the Mitsubishi T2, as that's a much more modern jet with its focus being on training pilots to use fighter jets that did definitely have such equipment. As for other aircraft, I've really no clue, and I don't know which helicopters will receive this capability, and which, if any, won't. Thermal imaging systems work in two basic ways, infrared illumination and thermal radiation. An image intensifier, which is what we'll all recognise as quote-unquote night vision with the green hue to everything, is, to paraphrase to the extreme degree, just like turning the brightness up. This type of illumination uses natural light to intensify the image captured through a lens, and this is what can be seen on the Panther 2, which will receive this equipment eventually by the way, but not at the drop of the patch, which I think is kind of fair. Image intensifiers can only be used at night, or at least only should be used at night, as all they do is vastly increase the brightness of light reflected back into the receiving lens, and so it will be blasted with nothing but bright white if you try to use them under the sunlight. At night time however, or I suppose in particularly poor weather conditions, sandstorms or snowstorms, extremely overcast weather, the types of things we don't see in War Thunder, image intensifiers provide a much clearer picture and can be further aided through the use of infrared illuminators. These are the lamps seen on the top of many Russian tanks, just to use them as an example, and emit a burst of infrared radiation undetectable to the naked eye, but will show up easily using an image intensifier, further highlighting the target and extending the effective range of the system. These, however, don't tend to work in harsh weather conditions like sandstorms or snowstorms, and should be disrupted by smoke. A thermal imaging system, however, is extremely useful, both at night and during the day, and this is where balancing issues are going to come into play, but we'll discuss that later on. Thermal imaging systems are present on most modern NATO equipment, from warriors to apaches to leopards, and they rely on thermal radiation to highlight targets against a dark background. This is not a full spectral colour array like you might have seen on thermal cameras, but a black and white image which displays temperature variations. As such, they cannot be disrupted by smoke, at least not most of the smoke that we have in War Thunder, although these days there are specific type of smoke grenades, such as those used on the K2 Black Panther tank, which can disrupt thermal imaging systems. Think of this type of sight as, rather than simply turning up the brightness, instead you're dialing the contrast up to 11,000, <clears throat> with greater differences in temperature showing up clearer over their surroundings. The cooler something is, the darker it is, while something hot, like a tank engine, is going to stand out like a Roman candle, clearly illuminating a target against a cooler background, even during the daytime. These systems are going to be modelled only for vehicles that did or do use them in real life, and only from the crew positions where they were available in the actual machine, or so Gaijin says. However, one of their images from the dev blog does make it seem as though tanks will be able to use them in third person so perhaps this was simply a demonstration and won't be available in-game, or perhaps somebody messed up the dev block. I'm not sure, we'll have to wait for a patch release, but potentially if the commander of the vehicle had such equipment, players will get to use it in third person. I can see Gaijin modelling it that way. Coupled with the modelling of these systems is something Gaijin promised us back in 2013, before tanks were even a thing. 
and that is the ability to turn on or off tank engines in order to reduce their thermal signature. This is an interesting mechanic, one that runs far deeper than you might realise, because one of the least authentic factors of top tier gameplay in War Thunder is how quickly these machines are running about the battlefield. Sure, they are fast, they are extremely fast in real life, but they don't go gun ho straight towards the enemy just waiting to get shot. Within 30 seconds of spawning in War Thunder a top tier, you can be flanked by enemies popping up where you don't expect to find them, or darting around corners like headless chickens, relying on you missing the tank entirely more so than aiming at long ranges and missing their weak spots. In real life, when it comes to tanks, camping is a big thing, and the use of these imaging systems, which will easily pick up the turbine engine of an Abrams, will encourage Abrams players to turn it off and advance across the map more slowly and safely, in turn slowing the pace of top tier gameplay and giving players a much higher chance to come back from a near defeat. This is one of my favourite aspects of low tier gameplay, something that keeps me coming back to it even though I have top tier vehicles for almost every nation. Because at rank 6 and 7, battle rating 8.7 and above, you either stomp or you get stomped, there's no real fight. Encouraging a slower pace means engagements will be more likely to happen from further away, which makes armour more important, places a greater importance on guided weaponry, for example ATGMs, and prevents the reaction times and who has the better ping style of engagements, which, to be frank, just throws strategy and playstyle out the window. One interesting issue that this brings to the table is whether or not tanks without an auxiliary power unit will still be able to function in game with their engines turned off, as many tanks in real life needed their engines on just to traverse the turrets, and don't quote me on this but I believe the Russian tanks like the T-80B or T-72A would need the engines on in order to power their auto reloading systems. If this isn't modelled in game and tanks remain fully functional without their engines turned on, just stationary, the mechanic will be a huge promotion of bush camping, which, even though I just talked it up, may not be good for the game if it's too heavily encouraged. It's not exactly realistic, although many turrets could be hand cranked without the engine being on, but nor is it realistic that within a few seconds of turning off your tank's engine, you'll slip by an enemy's thermal imagine sit- ah! In real life, these engines take ages to cool down to the point where the tank can stealth its way around thermal cameras, and likewise the gas turbines of an Abrams or T-80 take forever to spool back up again. So I don't see realism as being enough of an argument for why Gaijin would model the lack of functionality without the use of the engine accurately. Doing this however would prevent APUs being a beneficial component to tanks that have them, which is somewhat of a shame as it could provide a nice nuance to certain vehicles, for example the T-80U. But if it is modelled that tanks without APUs can a function without their engines on, I scarcely see the mechanic being used at all outside of cinematic purposes perhaps. I mean, why attempt to ghost buy an enemy tank when you could instead just shoot the guy? This isn't real life, teams in War Thunder don't travel in convoys or even stick together half the time, so you'd have to set yourself up in a position where you can't even yet see the enemy, turn your engine off, wait for them to pass you, and turn it back on in order to shoot them, hopefully before they're able to notice your heat signature and shoot you first. I mean, call me a negative Nancy, but I just don't see players doing that. Perhaps in simulator mode it'll prove more useful, as do most immersion based mechanics, but in realistic mode, no, and I barely see it being useful in the slightest in arcade which has markers for enemy players, but once again we'll have to see what the mechanics are like come patch time. The potential for some interesting balance is there, because while tanks with their engines off have the benefit of stealth, Tanks with them on have the benefit of adaptability and dynamic reactionary ability to an ever-changing situation. However, if done wrong, it could promote all the wrong styles of gameplay, allowing players to abuse bush camping to an even worse degree than some currently do, and making spawn camping during night battles far more difficult to deal with, which we do not need. But that's not even the biggest potential problem that could be brought to light this patch, because this may yet again prove a power creeping factor, as some nations will have access to this type of technology far earlier than others. For example, I think the ASU-85 at battery rating 6.3 is one of the earliest vehicles to have night vision with an infrared illuminator, 
or the Italian R3 T106 anti-aircraft vehicle could have it, all the way down at BR 3.7. I mean, this vehicle was produced in the early 80s and is already somewhat broken in-game. The Object 120 is about to get even more powerful at its broken battle rating of 7.7 .7, and any number of lower tier yet post-war vehicles could have access to night vision. Just because they don't have infrared illuminators doesn't mean the commander can't put on a pair of NVGs. This will give certain vehicles an unfair advantage or disadvantage in night battles but you can't really mess with the battle ratings in order to counter this because then you destroy the balance of these vehicles in regular daytime matches. This is going to be far more noticeable at top tier however, because not to promote any particular national bias or anything, but Soviet tanks were way behind on thermal sights compared to NATO counterparts at the same time frame, and that's just a fact. These are those black and white thermal imaging systems that are very useful in daylight as well as at night, but the Soviet Union, as far as I know, didn't use the things at all. In fact, I believe it was the T-80 UK model, which also has the Stura-1 active protection system, by the way, that first used thermal sights. On the other hand, America and Germany had already been using them for years with the Abrams and Leopard 2, and Britain's Challengers with their TOGS, or Thermal Observation and Gunnery Sight, are going to have this ability even earlier than 10.0, while Russia, as of yet, won't have it at all, as far as I'm aware, at least on the ground. This will be a huge disparity in performance between vehicles that do have thermal sights and those that don't. Once again, remember that unlike image intensifiers, these are going to be game changers even during the daytime, or in other words, in every single match. So vehicles that don't have them fighting at a tier where most other tanks do are going to be at an enormous disadvantage. Some of the 8.7 premium tanks, for example, may have access to thermal imaging, looking at you Type 74G, before 90% of the rest of their battle rank do. However, how is a T-80U, a tank already inferior to the competition, meant to function without access to this game-changing equipment? These are actually the reasons why Gaijin initially didn't want to model this component of Modern Warfare into War Thunder, and it's the same reason why they don't want to model realistic gun sights. I mean, just to use one example, the British gun sights during World War II were absolutely horrendously bad, and would render the tanks at an unfair disadvantage, unless they were down-tiered, making them too powerful in other aspects. Now, I'm not saying that Gaijin hasn't thought this through, or that they won't be able to deal with this complication, but it definitely is worth keeping in mind going forward, and may require some new provisions in order to maintain balance. So, the aspects being brought in, great, good for gameplay, good for immersion, cinematics, and they'll make things really interesting going forward. The balancing issues they bring to the table, interesting. I'm keen to see whether or not Gaijin will find a way to balance the disparity between vehicles, hopefully they don't just add the mechanic in as a spectacle without paying attention to what it does to the game itself and the potential imbalances it'll cause, but I'm interested to see how these new features change the gameplay. They'll definitely be more than just gimmicks, like the light tank scouting mechanic is. But of course, this is Gaijin, and they have to dig us around somehow. Welcome to the rant portion of this video, brought to you by another poorly implemented example of greed and disconnect between the developers and the players. The night vision and thermal imaging equipment are going to be researchable upgrade modules only available after amassing some few thousand RP, meaning stock grinds just got massively more difficult. What this essentially means is that a stock tank fighting at night may as well have a blindfold on. Enemies will be able to see you clear as day, and you won't be able to do a thing about it until you've researched the required modules, and my guess is that these things aren't going to be at tier 1. Not only do we now have to research parts in FPE in order to become effective in matches, side note, I love how it's called fire prevention equipment when it doesn't prevent fires at all, just puts them out, but we'll also have to unlock night vision, and for the tanks that have access to it, thermal imaging, and what's the bet Gaijin will make those two separate tier 4 mods, just for the ultimate screw-over of every player keen on using them. That means at least another 20,000 odd research points before your vehicle is capable enough to offset the fact that you still don't have your proper shells, smoke systems, a rangefinder, etc., and with the frequency of night battles being increased as of next patch, according to Gaijin, you are going to be faced with stock tanks in night battles, where most if not all of the enemy players can see you with no issue at all, 
that you have to watch for tracers and muzzle flashes. If you get a night battle in your stock top tier tank, which I can almost guarantee you will, you might as well bail out, wait out the crew log and try again, unless you can jank the game's post effects settings and even use your monitor or Nvidia Ansel, not sponsored by the way, to actually allow you to see anything. Now the standard response from the devil's advocates among you is that, well, isn't this comparable to making us grind for parts in FPE, upgraded shells, rangefinders, ERA packages or smoke grenades? And to that I can only say, that is the single stupidest argument I have ever heard. Number one, parts in FPE are at least researchable as your first two modules, and even if night vision and thermal imaging systems are grouped together in one module at rank two, which seems fairly generous considering this is Gaijin, that's still some 50,000 odd research points away for a top tier tank. Parts and FPE in and of themselves are already an unreasonable grind at top tier. I mean, at low tiers, 3.3, 5.7, hell, even 7.0. By the time you've spent your 10 free repairs, you should be well on the way to having a spaded tank and should at least have parts and FPE. But at top tier, the RP requirements are so much higher and the disparity between stock and spaded machines so much greater that you'll be lucky to even have parts unlocked by the time you've burned through those free reps meaning that you have around 20 to 30,000 RP left to grind before you're able to see anything in your night battles, which will be more frequent. But as for comparing it to needing to grind for rangefinders or smoke grenades, did anybody actually think about what they were saying before they said that? Being able to see in a large percentage of your battles is apparently comparable to being able to pinpoint the range of a vehicle which you should be able to accurately fire at anyway. I mean, these guns have such high velocity and the rounds have such little drop, rangefinders against tanks are not necessary for most of your shots. Helpful? Sure, but by the time you've made it to rank 6 or even 7, you should be capable enough of estimating ranges to not usually require the rangefinder. But using night vision equipment is going to be of significantly greater importance. This is not an upgrade, this is required equipment. Look, I don't want to rant too much more about this. For one, most of you lads are probably thinking and saying the same things I would be saying back to you anyway, and two, currently you can use post effects to see relatively well during night battles, making them essentially dim but still with enough light to pick out tanks at 800 meters away so long as they're moving or in the open. Currently, everybody has to do this, there is no night vision, so nobody is at an inherent disadvantage, aside from ULQ players who don't have access to post effects. However, ULQ players have an inherent advantage during the daytime, so I don't really have much sympathy. Thermal imaging, which is the one still useful during the day, that I'm okay with being a module as well, I probably should have highlighted that earlier. But night vision needing to be researched and unlocked through playing what will probably be 25 to 40 battles, depending on how many of them are night battles, that's more the equivalent of having the crosshair being an unlockable module. Even if you can make out the basic outline of tanks by abusing graphic settings, which you should not have to do, that's ridiculous to even suggest that that should be a requirement. But how are you going to be able to aim for weak spots, which you need to do because you're using stock shells? How are you going to be able to get the first shot off, which you need to do because any shot that damages your modules or sets you on fire instantly ends your game before you have parts in FPE? Imagine being in a stock Challenger 1 facing Leopard 2A5s, Leclerc's and C1 Aietes, which are not only near invulnerable to your stock shells from the front and able to penetrate you anywhere, but can also see you clear as day from 5 times as far away as you can see them. And no, you cannot rely on other enemy players being stock too, that is not a solution. This is the equivalent to what a lot of pilots have been complaining about with Cloud, where players can see you and you can't see them back. And as whoop de doo said in one of his recent videos on Tom Tier RRB, War Thunder is the only game ever to think that this is fair. In my opinion, night vision is actually going to be more essential than parts in FPE during night battles, and so expecting players to grind for it is incredibly unreasonable. It's doable, and I'm sure we'll all settle into this abusive relationship and just learn to do it eventually, but that doesn't mean we should be expected to. 
This is so incredibly greedy on Gaijin's part, I'm honestly just waiting until they start releasing premium ammunition. You want to be effective in night battles, which we will be increasing the frequency of? Fuck you. Pay up. Okay, perhaps it's not that bad. You do have the opportunity at least to suffer through the grind for free, but... Yeah, I'm a salty bastard, you lads know that by now. Hell, maybe I should start a Francis character and just do rants as a character. What do you think about that? Let me know in the comments. I'm honestly considering starting to do that now. But unless the community starts a loud enough movement, like we did with parts in FPE, in regards to this, Gaijin will do it, because trying to get any sort of compromise from Gaijin at this point is just a case of the community being more ridiculously stubborn than the dev team. Stock grind for thermal imaging I am fine with, that's plenty fair enough. The implementation of these systems I am extremely excited for, it's a significant part of modern warfare and I'm glad it will be represented in the game, as it'll really highlight the difference in gameplay between older tanks and more modern tiers. The engine switching on and off mechanic, I'm skeptical about how useful it'll prove, but I am interested to see it. One thing I was interested to see is that there's no icon for night vision or thermal sights, or for the engine being on or off, down here, like there is for FPE, smoke systems, or tow hooks. Overall, I'm a massive fan of these new mechanics being implemented, but a stock grind for night vision, which is absolutely going to be essential equipment considering that you have to bank on everybody else in your battle having it, being a researchable module? That is such a slap in the face from Gaijin, I do not think we as players should let this go. If you want to start up the level of uproar that we did for the parts and FPE thing, please go and do so with my blessing. It won't last time, and I think it's better that we as a community do that than let this stand. Anyway lads, that is going to do us for this video. I very much hope you got some enjoyment out of it, and that if you did, you'd leave a like. I am trying to do less and less of these rants, guys, but... Gaijin just keeps making shitty decisions and giving me more and more things to need to rant about. Subscribe and hit that bell icon, join the 360 squad, and let me know your thoughts on night vision and thermal optics being implemented this patch. Are you excited? Do you have any bearing on the stock grind issue? I'm interested to hear your thoughts on the matter, so let me know down in the comments. If you agree with me, maybe share this video around, get the discussion going. Come follow me on Twitter and Twitch, I am going to come back to live streaming on Twitch fairly soon. Join the Discord server, which I've revamped a little over the last couple of days. It's now called The Coalition. Yeah, let the bad puns continue. <laughs> Check out Patreon or hit that join button here on YouTube if you'd like to support this channel further. And make sure to head over to the new merch store. That's another great way to support me and grab yourself something nice in the process. Links, as always, are in the description below. Thanks for watching this video, lads. Have a lovely good day. And always remember, keep your bagpipes to hand, keep your kilt on, and I shall see you next video. I say a wee thank you to these lads for supporting me on Patreon. Captain Fubar, DA261, Geesley Gadarsen, and Dark Recon. You lads are bra. If you wish to join them, come check out the link in the description below.